My laptop is something I use every single day for productivity, content creation and general life organisation. And with learning shifting more digitally, I recently made the decision to invest in a device that was more reliable and made working from home a better experience. So naturally, the MacBook Pro caught my eye. I've been using this for a few months now and there are some apps I absolutely love and are must-haves for students. Some of these can be synced seamlessly across lots of different devices, which will maximize your productivity and make your workflow 10 times easier. So without further ado, the first app is Notion. When I first came across Notion, I thought it seemed quite complicated and I wasn't sure whether it was worth learning how to use it, but it's been so useful in helping me to keep organized with all the different things going on in my life. Starting with schoolwork, you can use Notion to track your progress for your lectures or classwork, and you can attach your notes into your checklist so that everything is in one organized, safe space. I've got my weekly planner where I'm able to tick things off when I complete them throughout the day, which let's be honest, that's the best part of making a to-do list, being able to tick it off at the end. I've put all of my content creation stuff with regard to planning videos or Instagram posts on Notion. And the cool thing about this is that it has this calendar view but you can change it to a table where you can see a general overview of all your work or a board view where you can track your progress so as you can see some videos are in progress and some of them are just ideas that I've got and whenever I get a spare moment I'll add some ideas to it so that it's all ready for me when I come to film. I also keep books that I've read in here or that I want to read on Notion because I set myself a goal of reading one book a month. You know when you finish reading a book you just think that was a really good book but you don't fully remember the details of the gems that it had inside it. Some of them have really good nuggets of advice that I don't want to forget. So I will just make a really short summary of some of the books that I've read and the parts that stood out to me. So Notion is free for students. I like to think of Notion as a personal assistant that helps me to keep on top of everything that I have going on. So it's definitely one to check out if you haven't already and just try it out and see if you like it. The next app is called Flow. When you've got a deadline and it seems like this big mountain that needs to be climbed or this huge task that needs to be accomplished, it can be easy to not do it or to leave it till the last minute. But it's actually useful to do it in small timed chunks and flow can help you with that. As you can see, you can choose different times to set your flow duration. I like to work with a Pomodoro Inspire technique. If you don't know what the Pomodoro technique is, it's a time management method for focus work and helps if you are prone to procrastination. Ideally, you set the timer to 25 minutes and work until the timer goes off and then you take a break for five minutes. However, I personally like to set the timer to 45 minutes because I found that it's usually around the 20th minute mark that I get a burst of inspiration and I get into the flow of work. And so I don't want to have to stop if I've got an idea. So I'll usually work for about 45 minutes and then the break is usually more rewarding because I can take a five minute break or I can take a 15 minute break. So it's just doing what works for you because you can set your flow duration from 15 minutes to 90 minutes of focused work. You can set it to block certain apps. So if there's an app that you tend to check when you know you're supposed to be working, you can just block those apps and stop them from loading up when you click on them. Another good thing about this app is that you can track the amount of workflow that you've done. So maybe if you did a certain amount last week and then this week you find that you are falling behind and you know to pick up the pace. It's a very effective and simple app and we love simplicity over here. So moving on to the next app, if you've got an essay to do, then this app is one that you might need. Zotero is an app I found out about quite recently and I thought, where has this been all this time? Have I been hiding under some sort of rock or am I the last student to find out about this because I don't know about you but essay writing can sometimes be quite a messy workflow you've got lots of different tabs open you've got an article in one bookmark another article in another bookmark you've got a tab open of an article that you saw but you don't want to close because you don't need it now but you might need it later and it's just a whole mess but Zotero organizes it for you so you download the app and you also download an extension that links to the app. If you see an article that you like, you can click on the extension and save it to your library. If there's a search with some keywords that you particularly like, you can save all those articles to your library and there it is in your Zotero bank of articles. 
you can open up the article and highlight and annotate the really important parts so when you come back you don't have to read the entire article again you know exactly where you need to pick up your information and add to your essay so that saves you some time and if you can't find the article online again you can just click on the link in Zotero and it will take you straight back to the web browser version of the article. When you finish writing your essay you can set it to your reference style. So my uni does Harvard referencing so I will do that and then I'll paste it and there you go you have a full list of all your citations ready to go. I will still look through all the sources and tweak some of them to make sure that it is the way I want. Never completely trust any automatic citation generator, always double check it before you submit your work. I've never had a problem with this, but this is definitely something to consider. The fourth app is Google Chrome. And why I mention this is because there are a lot of different search engines out there. There is Safari, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, Bing. Do people still use Bing? I, I mean, I don't know who still uses Bing, but it's there. With the new MacBook Pro 2020 with the M1 chip, I know that Safari has been optimized to be faster and have a better battery life. But for the work that I do, so uni, job, um, making videos, entertainment, Google Chrome is not noticeably slower and it does the job perfectly. I like Chrome because of the extensions it allows you to have and these extensions genuinely make using the internet a better experience. You can personalize it and also the different bookmarks allow you to really organize yourself when using Chrome. Finally, some sort of cloud storage. I have Google Drive and OneDrive. Those are two separate apps, but they work very similarly. I'm the type of person that likes to have backups for my backup. So I have this and I also have these. But the main way that I store my notes is through cloud storage and it is by far the best way for me. There are benefits to having either of them. With OneDrive, you have 5 GB of free storage space, but with Google Drive, you have 15 GB of free storage space. So Google's a bit more, bit more generous. I use both of them, but I prefer OneDrive because it syncs seamlessly to Microsoft Word, OneNote, and all the other Microsoft apps that I just naturally use. So I can be rest assured that any work that I'm doing is automatically being saved. I don't have to actively save it all the time, and I can access it on any device, anywhere that has an internet connection. So those are my five must-have apps. I'll leave a link to them in the description box down below below so go ahead and download them if you haven't already let me know what you think and if you think I missed any out any apps that you're loving right now that's making your life as a student easier I want to know leave it in the comment section down below and I'll catch you guys in my next video